big challenge in the AI and machine learning space is showing business value quickly and efficiently showing an ROI on our projects and our initiatives. I've seen that play out in my career. And if you've read any article on AI and machine learning in the last five years, I'm sure you've seen the antidote of somewhere in the range of 70 to 80% of AI projects failing. And I've certainly seen that play out. That's why I'm excited to talk about a framework and a, and a concept that I think is going to be helpful in helping us alleviate that. So first, let me introduce myself. My name is Manny Bernabe. I help companies launch AI and analytics initiatives. If you want to learn more about my work, head over to mannybernabe.com. So now let's talk about the four disciplines of execution. This is a book that I recently came across and I've really enjoyed it. It tied together a lot of different concepts that I have found helpful in my career. And in this video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you A, what this book is about and go over some of the key concepts and B, how it might be helpful in the context of an AI project or AI initiative. So let's jump into it. The four disciplines of execution or 4DX, big overarching concept is that strategy does not equal execution. You go to business school, you go get an MBA, very heavy on the strategy. Then you go and you put those concepts to work and you don't get the results that you want in part because it falls apart on the execution front. You need a new set of principles disciplines and guidelines to go from strategy to execution and getting the results that you want. And these are the four principles that are laid out by the authors of 4DX. Principle number one is working on wildly important goals. So narrow your focus on the thing that matters the most in a particular period. Don't do 10 things, do one thing really, really well. Discipline number two is acting on lead metrics rather than lag metrics. A lag metric is something like revenue in a quarter or customer satisfaction that happens after doing a fair amount of work. Lead metrics are the metrics that you can do week to week that are going to help you generate that lag metric that you want to have over a period. So if your lag metric is to generate $25 million in sales in a quarter, then your lead metric might be the number of leads that you're that you're generating in a particular week, the number of calls that you're making, the number of lead magnets that you're doing, the number of videos that you're doing in a particular quarter, such as this one. So those are the lead metrics that you can control, and that's really what you want to focus on and, and, and keep that top of mind. Discipline number three is having a compelling scoreboard. So you have a, a, a dashboard or a scoreboard where everybody knows whether or not the team is winning or losing and what points have been put on the board, quote unquote, that are helping to drive lead metrics that are ultimately going to help drive the lag metrics. And then discipline number four is having a cadence of accountability. So making this a regular practice, you're meeting weekly and you're reviewing your progress towards your wig, you're reviewing your lag metrics, your lead metrics, you're making commitments to the team in terms of what you're going to do to help drive performance. And that becomes a habit and a discipline that you instill within your team. So a very, very nice concept and framework here. And I really enjoyed it in particular, this focus on lead metrics. I got to tell you, this is a really powerful concept here, this lead metric concept, and also the scoreboard, the fact that you can look at a, a, a dashboard and know whether or not you're winning or losing. That's really important too. So let's talk about where AI and machine learning are coming to play here. So as I mentioned, AI does not equal business value. We've seen this play out quite a bit. Very difficult to go from a data science model to actually generating some revenue or some cost savings off of that and showing the return on those initiatives. And, and so as I'm reading this framework, a couple of ideas have come to mind in terms of how you might use this framework to help boost your overall ROI or, or your business value with AI. So number one is aligning AI projects with the overall wig. I can't, I, there's been a number of times when I've been brought into a team to do AI analytics, data-driven type of work, and I want to help them, but if they don't have an overall wig, an overall big goal, 
that they're working towards, it's difficult for me to do that. It's difficult for me to build a model for to, for generating the results that are going to be valuable if they themselves don't know what results are are valuable. And that happens quite a bit. So number one is, you know, when you start a new AI project, try to think about what's the overall wig for that team and try to align your AI project so that the, 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 the output of that project is going to help with that wig or is at least aligned with that particular wig for the team. Concept number two here is around helping to boost these lead metrics. As I mentioned, the lead metrics are where you're going to have the maximum amount of leverage in terms of getting to your goals. So if you can leverage AI and machine learning models to help boost these lead metrics, any group that is using this framework is going to be very, very happy to work with you. So aligning the outputs of your AI projects so that they boost the overall lead metrics. And third on this list is a little bit more novel, but this idea of leveraging AI to measure lead metrics. There was an important point made in the book that lead metrics tend to be difficult to measure. Those are things that you're typically not already tracking. And so you, you oftentimes have to put in some sort of manual process to generate these lead metrics. And that can be tedious, that can add overall friction to the process. Well, those are great use cases for AI machine learning. AI machine learning can help make that a little bit more, more manageable and more automated in terms of measuring those lead metrics. So that's a third way in which we might leverage AI for 4DX and, and help these two concepts work together. All right. So in general, I highly recommend this book. Go out and get this book. Go out and read this book. Great book. I really enjoyed it. And I put together a, a, a summary of some of the key concepts in 4DX for my own edification, but I'm happy to share that with you. And you can head over to gomanybernabe.com 4DX and you'll get access to that resource. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you think. Have you read 4DX? Do you think that leveraging this type of framework is going to help us solve this problem? of getting to business value faster with AI and machine learning. Would love to hear your comments. Drop them down below. Thanks, talk to you soon.